I've heard, in fact, Sean Combs is bisexual. I've heard that from people who work for Bad Boy, who have now departed, uh, gays who were in Bad Boy, who have been, in fact, told that he was, he likes women, he, so he would, have, in fact, have to be bisexual. I've heard Sean Combs is, in fact, bisexual. From people who used to work in his company. So, I'm assuming, I'm not bisexual with Sean Combs. I've not spoke to Sean Combs. But based on those sources, I've heard he's in fact bisexual. This is Tony Newman, and you're watching That's Hot. Uh, in my book, uh, The Memoir I Rise, published in April 2011, I mention rapper, actors, uh, producers, and some of those that I have spoke publicly on is LL Cool J. I met as a street prostitute 15, 16 years ago. <laughs> Baby girl was straight this Chanel. Uh, the encounter with LL Cool J was a one-time encounter. Uh, I serviced LL Cool J. I knew it was LL Cool J. And he knew, in fact, I was transgender. Um, it was like any other encounter I had. I got paid. I performed the service. Thank you. Never spoke again. We didn't text, email, call. We didn't exchange any uh, numbers or contact information. I never saw him again. I saw Eddie Murphy 15, 16 years ago pick up friends of mine on that street block in New York City. Hey boy, you look mighty cute in them jeans. Uh, Eddie Murphy was on the strip during that time, come out a lot. And he not only recruited, but paid very well. Uh, several transgender friends of mine who I saw get in his car, and I also saw them get out his car with several hundred dollars. So, I know for a fact Eddie Murphy, ever since uh, 96, has been utilizing transgender prostitutes. Um, did, did, he ever tell him, did he ever tell him to keep it quiet, or did he ever tell him? I don't know if he, since I didn't have a one-on-one -on -one encounter with him, I don't know the verbiage that he used. Uh, I'm assuming since they were, we were street prostitutes, I guess he never thought we'd, we'd tell anybody anyway. Most people out there during that time, we were street prostitutes. Working the block late at night in the meat packaging district in the village. Uh, I, you know, it was spoken that you wouldn't tell anybody, but I don't think they really thought who would listen anyway during that time. So when they were out there recruiting, we were basically prostitutes of no societal value, so I don't really think anybody at that time was listening to what we would have said or done during that time. As far as media coming out and asking who are your clients, we never, that nobody cared except the police who came out quite a bit. And, and just for people who might not be familiar with New York or might not be familiar with like uh, the area of like uh, what was you referring to? Can you explain what the meat packing district is? We used to call it 14th Street. 14 between 7th, 8th, and 9th Avenue. You would see 50 to 100 on the block street spread across of African American, Latino, and Asian, and other minority transgenders out working the streets trying to make a hustle. That is how we made our money to get our silicone implants, hormones, injections. When we could go to the doctor, that's how we paid for it. That's how we paid for food, that's how we paid for rent, as street prostitutes. So we were never seen in the day, but then it came nighttime, and uh, we came out from about 10 p.m. until 6 in the morning, Monday through Sunday. Also had multiple encounters with Hot 97 DJ, Mr. C. You know what I mean? This is the winning hand. We saw Mr. C driving the Hot 97 van, <laughs> circling around. I've been in that van, I would say maybe 30, 40 times. During that time, I had long braids. I was called Fit Terry, was my street name, and that was my transgender escort name, Terry, and I was uh, out there. I Mr. C was very nice to me. He enjoyed receiving good oral sex. Would verbally express, do it right, come on, come on. And the better you did it, he'd throw a 20 your way. Say, all right now. And you keep
keep doing it until he finished his thing and you grab your money and he opened the van door and out you went. And, and what about how long, how long uh, was that ago? Oh, uh, for me that was about 15 years ago that I used to see Mr. C doing that year and a half, two years I worked as a street prostitute. I saw him three or four times a week. I was fortunate in the beginning to get picked up three or four times a week. Uh, as time went on, he began to look for newer people. He'd use you for a while and move on to new meat. And uh, I didn't get in as much in the last year, but that first year, 50 times. I've had encounters with Mr. C. Yes, there are gays, in, and there are gays and lesbians and bisexuals in hip hop. Because not all of them are gay. Some of them do like women, but they get freaky sometimes. <laughs> now come on over here and fuck me up the ass. The National Enquirer contacted me, um, polygraphed me with Joe Paglioli, a Secret Service agent from John F.K. Uh, he polygraphed me. I stayed there for two hours. We signed a contract. Uh, and. Uh, they contacted LL Cool J, it was coming out, and I had a contract, everything was signed, both come out that Monday, and never did. From that point, Jackie Jasper of the Hollywood Street Kings said, show me your contract that you signed. I showed him what the National Enquirer had me to sign, um, and I met Polygraph, that I named LL Cool J, of the one-time encounter, and I was polygraphed to that. He ran it on his site, and eventually he ran it two months later in the Hip Hop Weekly magazine. On the cover is LL Cool J Gay. And that article talked about LL, Eddie Murphy, and Hot 97 DJ Mr. C. Did LL Cool J ever offer you anyone cush money? Not to he did not. He hired Martin Singer. He sent me, my business partner, my agent, my manager, and my publicist letter saying if you speak again about me, I'm going to sue you. We responded, let's go to court. We'll meet you there. Martin Singer is now representing John Travolta and other big name celebrities. Uh, he represented Eddie Murphy when he was picked up in 97 from the transgender prostitute who the cop called her performing or sex, who a year later was found dead, jumping off her roof or something. Uh, same lawyer. And uh, he sent everybody letters. He sent uh, another cease and desist letter second time, Martin Singer, on behalf of LL Cool J, to my whole team again after I did the New York interview uh, with the uh, New York radio station, the big one there, I can't remember the name. And uh, we sent back and said, We shall not stop. They went away. Martin Singer, LL Cool J, nothing ever happened. Never went to court, never actually filed a lawsuit, just sent a bunch of threatening letters. Shut up. He went to XXL Magazine saying, I've never done this, and that was the extent of it. And I've not heard from LL since that time. Do you think coming out will ever be a big deal or a trend in hip hop culture exactly? Hip hop and rap keeps trying to suppress it. Um, but I think Snoop said, it's in hip hop. It's not in rap. I think it's his statement. He's saying, yeah, there's a lot of gays and lesbians in hip hop, but you don't find rap gay artists. Well, Frank Ocean came out as an R&B singer, you know, and he was big. He was on the incline and, you know, a lot of people accepted him and appreciated him for being, you know, a stand-up guy to say that he was. But I believe rapping is a little bit different because it comes from a culture where, you know, that's not accepted. In LL Cool J, wasn't he a rapper before he was anything else? <laughs> Doesn't they give him awards for being one of the earlier rappers who laid the way? What is he? <laughs> Didn't Hot 97 DJ work with Biggie? Produce some of his stuff, if I'm not mistaken, in his early history? They worked together? So wasn't he a rap producer? Isn't he in the rap industry? And he's Hot 97 DJ, Mr. C? So who is Mr. C and LL Cool J but not a rap producer? and a rap artist. So there's two people that defies Snoop's argument. It's in hip hop. Frank Ocean is hip hop. Frank Ocean ain't rap. But what is Mr. C and LL Cool J? So 
so I don't know. Absolutely. And, and just a side note, you know one of Biggie Small's best friends was a gay guy. That's what they tell me. So what was that? I understand his entourage of Biggie Smalls had a gay guy. Uh, Mr. C is evidently a bisexual producer. The Lord knows who else he might have had in that entourage. So hey, if Biggie and, and LL Cool J and people working for Biggie, I mean this is the rap industry here that we're talking about. These people were associates and employees and producers for Biggie. LL Cool J was one of the earlier rappers I think Mama Gonna Knock Me Out, 95, 96, and rap was really getting its footing. So if, 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 if Mr. C and LL Cool J are not evidence that disputes what Snoop has said, yes, it's in hip hop, but it's also in rap, and it's in every other fiber of American society. There are gay senators, gay legislators, gay politicians, gay lawyers, gay judges. I don't know one industry that can't say we got one. They're in football, they're in baseball, they're in track. We may not speak about it, but it's all over. And until we stop acting like, oh my God, there's a gay in basketball. Is that news really? Uh, outside of the, the three celebrities that you did mention, what other male celebrities have you had sex with? When you say male celebrities, uh, there is two coming out in a national publication in two weeks. So I will tell you all, on that's hot, wait and see. Two huge names will be coming out in a major publication in two weeks. That I've just announced about two people who me and my female escort friend, Mistress Carmen, saw as a team. I worked with a female, an Asian girl, for almost three years. We traveled all over the country together. And uh, she and I got to see some really big names. That will be coming out in two weeks in another publication. So I would say just stay tuned. That's how it will get the first tip when it pops. Um, can you give me a hint? Is, is it a hip hop artist? Is it an actor? Is it a. It would be an actor and uh, a husband of a famous female celebrity. That's all I can say. Current act, current husband of a famous current female celebrity. These are names that are currently in the news today. As a threesome with my Asian female counterpart, Mistress Carmen, I was Mistress Terry. We had encounters as a female transgender team for almost four years in Las Vegas, Hollywood, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Las Vegas, Boston, Chicago, New York, Canada, Arizona. That's all I can think of right off here. And how much would these celebrities pay you? Uh, we got paid 500 a pop, 300 for her, the female. They would come to her as a client first through her ads as a female escort. And she would say, would you like to see my transgender counterpart dressed in the same outfit as me? We would wear a cop, nurse, Fireman uniform, identical, and do a threesome. I've heard it from multiple sources that Chris Boss is in fact uh, bisexual. I've heard that Trey Songz in Atlanta is bisexual from encounters and associates in Atlanta, Georgia, saying that he would be bisexual since he does have encounters with women and other. I call that bisexual, not gay, since he is having sex with the opposite sex. He would have to be bisexual. So I've heard he is in fact bisexual. That's hot.com.